Our first workshop today would be hosted by Isidora Gatarik. Isidora started her professional career in 2012 at the University of Novi Sad, where she spent four years working as a research associate. During the same time, she was also a teaching associate at the Petnica Science Center for five years. She's currently a senior data analyst at Jagger and has received multiple awards, scholarships, and fellowships, has, has co-authored four papers published in the SCI listed journals, and has been invited to present or give a talk in over 40 plus international conferences. In 2017, Isidora founded IG Research and Analytics, a small business dedicated to training and consulting people in data analytics and research methodology that was merged with Data S3 in 2023. Although Isidora is devoted to her data analytics career, she spends a considerable amount of time volunteering, which aim to provide support and inspiration to women and girls from the tech or data science industry in Serbia. Currently, she is using her influence to support women and girls in Serbia as a WIDS ambassador, an active member of Association of Business Women in Serbia, sister analyst, Serbian AI Society, as well as women in tech advocate in Serbia. Her workshop today is entitled Analyzing Data from Scratch in Python. She has a lot to cover and hence would be taking her questions in the end, but please feel free to put your questions in chat or Q&A as we continue collating them. Isidora, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Devanjana. Uh, I will share my screen. Uh-huh. Uh, it says, says to me that I cannot share. Give me just a second to try again. Uh -huh. Okay, now I can. So do you see my screen? Okay, great. We can start. As the Banjana told you, I'm Isidora and I will uh, today present you uh, how to analyze your data from scratch in Python. My presentation is mostly focused to practical work, so you will see a lot of print screen of the code uh, in Python, and I will try to explain you from scratch when you start to analyze your data, where is your start or beginning, and uh, which actually uh, path you need to go through uh, uh, till you receive some outputs and results. Uh, this will be very fast presentation to, to say like that, but I leave in a folder, uh, it will be shared with you at the end of the presentation, uh, the entire more detailed code in Python with comments, uh, the data sets I created for my students and you can play with those data sets. Uh, this presentation and some additional material. So I think that you will have a lot of material if you want to cover more about data analytics in Python. And of course, the very one very important thing, if you want to uh, ask me some questions uh, after this QA session, uh, you can uh, text me at link on LinkedIn. I, I'm always happy to share my knowledge. And I think that it's, it's extremely important uh, to share the knowledge uh, one with, with each other. So feel free to contact me for any questions you have about data analytics. So this is the agenda. The first thing, uh, I will just briefly explain the Jupyter Notebook and the environment we will use and why Jupyter Notebook and, and, and Python in general. Uh, after that, I will cover some uh, data pre-processing parts. Uh, after that, descriptive statistic, uh, inferential statistic, parametric and non-parametric statistical tests like ANOVA, t-test, uh, and some non-parametric versions uh, related to those tests. Probably you heard some of them. Uh, and at the end, we will cover just a briefly correlation and linear regression. After that, uh, if, if we go in some deeper uh, regression discussion, uh, that's a little bit more advanced level. So this is only the basic level for today. So this is the Python notebook, and I uh, sent the installation guide 
uh, uh, when you log in pro probably or register for this this uh, workshop, you receive some PDFs. So probably you already uh, are familiar with this. This is Jupyter Notebook environment and it looks like that. So you can see here that you have a lot of projects you, you can uh, save. Uh, here is the code you will uh, when you're coding in Python. This is the code. Uh, this is a place where you actually coding and there you can see an output of your code. This is of, of course very simple code, code only for the explanation. And, but I, I will just briefly explain why Jupyter Notebook Be because we have a lot of other environments that we can use but in data analytics we prefer Jupyter Notebook mostly because of those three aspects. First of all, that actually you can compile all aspects of data project in one place, from uh, data storage uh, to data uh, pre-processing, data analytics, you can save graphs, you can uh, uh, create more advanced things like machine learning model, more advanced machine learning models, deep learning models and things like that. So it's very useful for you, uh, especially for uh, us, we are analysts, and we want to. We would like to see always uh, what we create. So when you code and run the code, you will uh, see the output above, which is why uh, the Jupyter Notebook is actually an interactive environment. And uh, one very important thing: the Jupyter Notebook is very easy to learn and to use. And I think that that's also very important for us who are doing more mostly analytics and we are not so engineering. Uh, 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 we are not so in, in those engineering tasks. Why Python? Uh, to be honest, Python is uh, today one of the most popular programming language in data science in general. Uh, I think that all my colleagues will agree. And uh, it, it's... Uh, uh, how to say, we can use it for a wide range of tasks from web development, data engineering, data analysis, machine learning, natural language processing, deep learning, uh, and things like that. So you can create anything you want in Python and you can compile anything you want in Python. So practically, uh, if, you have one, if you have one data team or AI team, uh, Python will be you not. Know, it's not enough. You need some some other uh, programming languages for data engineering, but it's uh, it is the programming language that can cover most of the things you will do. Uh, so first thing first, <laughs> as I uh, named here. So uh, first thing and the most important thing is to import the packages in Python uh, in guide. Uh, uh, guide the installation that I uh, give it to you, you will see how to install the packages in Python if, if this is the first time actually that you use Python. So no worries, you will have step-by-step -step everything explained uh, uh, in, in that guide uh, guidance and in this presentation and code that, that will be given to you. But the Pandas uh, is one of the most popular uh, Python package in data analytics, and we are using it a lot because it can cover a lot of things. Uh, for the visualization, my prefer uh, package is Plotly because uh, you can create very beautiful graphs with a wide, ra wide range of colors, 3D graphs and things like that, but also Matplotlib and and are very useful. So I will show you also the graphs created in those packages too. So after that, the very important thing is to load the data properly. So this is the path uh, related with my laptop, laptop, of course, but this path will be different for your, uh, for your laptop. So you need practically uh, to find the location when you store, uh, when you download the data set and store somewhere, you need to uh, locate it. And this is uh, the way to do that. Uh, we uh, have some, how to say, uh, I missed the word, but in in general, uh, I like to save it in a memory uh, in, in, as uh, some sh in some short version. So I give uh, the short uh, as an object with some short uh, version names. So I give this object uh, my initials uh, IG, and uh, after this step. Always when I type IG, uh, the, the Python will recognize that it's related with this data set. So I, do, I don't have to download each time the data set. Uh, this is 
uh, the way uh, th that I can storage uh, in a memory uh, uh, in a shorter way, say like that. So, uh, as I notice, uh, as I write here, uh, you can download, of course, uh, the data after this session, and you can try everything what we uh, uh, what we cover here. I here give you a, an example of Excel uh, data set, but also in the code and in uh, the examples I leave in a folder, you will have CSV and JSON uh, file as an example of how to load uh, CSV and JSON files. It's, it, loading those files uh, is a little bit different than uh, the Excel. So we can start, start with data pre-processing. The first tip, sorry. The first thing always be, will be to list the variables that you have in data set. In, in, in real environment, uh, data engineers will give you some set or the other, other people who work in your organization. You, you will not know uh, uh, which actually variables you have. So the first step will always be to check uh, uh, which variables and features you have in data set and to know the type of the variables you have because it's very important later when you when you try to pick the right statistical test and to to conduct the uh, the appropriate uh, data uh, analytics and to pick the the appropriate graph it's very important for you to know which type of the data you have you have more than two ways to check that but i leave you here only two in code you will find more than two uh, for those who like to play with python and after that, uh, one very good uh, thing, uh, if you don't want to load the entire data set, uh, because almost always you will work with a lot of data, you can uh, load only the head and the tail of the data set just to check if everything is okay, how they're stored, uh, what type of data do you have, and things like that. Uh, almost always you will have to rename something. Uh, because uh, engineers or, or some other people who give you the data don't know actually what was the proper uh, or what was the best uh, uh, name for your variable. If you create, for example, from those analytics, if you create uh, some BI reports, it's very important for you to have some, uh, um, some appropriate name uh, for the features and this is the way that you can actually do that. Uh, so you saw probably that always re I refer here uh, the data set I loaded and save it in a memory with my initials. So that's very important uh, to know that you can use after that any, any function in code uh, and only related with this. You don't need to, to load the data set uh, again and again and again. Also, something that we actually meet uh, very often is creating of subsets, subsets, especially in a situation when you have a, a lot of data, a lot of uh, business questions or research questions that you need to answer. So you need to practically split the data uh, and to, to create some subsets to answer the specific questions. I pick from my data set and I don't know the dimension, but uh, all data sets I give to you are fictional uh, because I created literally I. Uh, so me, actually, not I. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, it, it will be a little bit strange to you because they don't refer to anything specific. But I think that those data sets are great. All my stud students agreed that uh, they were very helpful for them to understand the logic of the data analytics in Python. So I created in that data set some, uh, uh, some research, que research question to actually select only male participants and to investigate something on that. Uh, also, one very important uh, thing, uh, before you start any data analytics project, it's very important for you in this part pre-processing part of, of the data analysis to uh, conclude what you want to investigate. No matter if you're in research in, the, in academy, uh, uh, do you want to conduct some research? Do you want to create some students paper? Or do you want to, to define some business questions? It's very important to be very uh, 
very strict and concise what you want to investigate. Uh, if you uh, if you pick the right features, right variables, and and you defined uh, the hypothesis in the right way, you conduct the half of the job in data analytics. So it's extremely important uh, to know what you investigate. It will be much easier and faster for you uh, to cover all the paths in data analytics. I think that that's generally important for the entire data science, science world, but I can talk only about my job. So in data analytics, it's extremely important to, to know what you want to investigate. After that, uh, something that we uh, do very often is actually that we discover the unique values. So you have some variables, uh, for example, you never met before or feature, and you would like to see uh, uh, the the uh, the fields they have. For example, if you have something with the name field of work, okay, what mean to you? Nothing. It's a feature field of work, but you just, uh, it's important for you to know which field of, of work are covered in that data set. So this, this, this option will be the best for you. And it's very simple. Python is very simple programming language. You were, you will know that if you didn't programming in Python till now, you, you will see when you start to do that. Python is extremely intuitive and extremely simple. So, just play with Python and you will learn everything, believe me. And if you want to, to uh, do that, uh, for example, to count the number per each category, for example, you list the field of works you have and you want to count how many, I don't know, architects you have, how many uh, teachers you have, how many scientists you have, how many data analysts you have, you can do that with this function. If you want to, to uh, convert it to percentages, you can do that with just a, a simple addition of this normal is equal true uh, in Brex. So uh, it's very, very simple. Also something that we uh, do very often in pre-processing is uh, actually trying to discover a minimum and maximum of the values because it's very important for later uh, parts when you uh, try to remove outliers, outliers, uh, outliers, outlier, liars, extreme values, missing values, uh, or something similar. So it's very important for you to know uh, at each variable uh, what's the maximum and a minimum of the value you have in data set. That will guide you uh, to the process of uh, removing outliers faster. Also, NANS uh, is something that we have in every data set. So if you want to drop uh, NANS, NALS, and things like that, this is uh, an option to, to you. Uh, with the, this function, you can drop uh, all NAN and NALS uh, from one data set that you will use. And if you want to do for a specific subset or, or variable, this is a, a, a second option. Also, some people, but I don't recommend that, uh, as a someone who is uh, almost 10 year in this job and six year in, uh, in industry, I never ever recommend you uh, to fill empty fields, uh, to fill in the empty fields with zeros uh, because it's, da it's dangerous. Uh, sometimes zero has meaning, uh, especially if you work with money and especially if you work with revenues, but I need to cover that you can do that and that in pre-processing uh, step you will find on some some courses that they recommend it in general I do not but uh, also you have a very very simple uh, way to do that as you can see Python is very simple language uh, the last step I can say in data pre-processing is removing outliers and you have actually have a two ways. Which one you will choose is upon you. I will say you which one I always choose, uh, but I will show you both of the ways. This is the first way and it's not so precise. I can say like that. So you create a histogram for one spe specific variable. For example, this one, also my fictional variable. And uh, you can see the distribution distribution of your data. So you can see that the distribution is not uh, normal. Gaussian normal distribution looks like differently. And okay, 
that that's uh, very often in, in in real world so you will never ever have a perfect data with the perfect distribution so uh, practically you choose by looking uh, where is the board border uh, of this uh, values and uh, you can cut everything higher than the value on the board and this is the value of the board. This is not precisely. Uh, it's very fast. And if you are in hurry and you have half an hour to finish your project, probably this will be an only option for you, but I don't recommend you that. There is another option. Uh, it's uh, more detailed, but uh, it, it's more precise. Uh, to work with percentiles. So you practically how it works. Uh, you can detect the value that you have on 25, uh, 25th and 75th percentiles, and you will exclude everything above, above and below of those values. So practically you will leave the half of the data that are really in the middle of your distribution. And this is the code, I will not uh, read uh, line by line. This is the code, uh, this uh, uh, function is written by and my colleagues in some projects, so you can use it. Uh, you don't have that fu function still important in any in any packet packages, uh, and you can apply this function. After that, calculate the value that you have at 25th and 75th percentage, and those values uh, are 4 and 59. So you can exclude everything uh, that is uh, higher or lower than those values, and you will have you will see what you can drive a, uh, draw a histogram just to see how it looks before and after this is before uh, you can see that that's identical like this one and this is after still we don't have a normal distribution which means that the date is very specific and that measures are distributed like that but it's more close to the normal distribution uh, to the normal distribution and it's uh, more precise to work with that especially if you work in a finance industry or, or, or you work with money um, you don't have a lot of space for mistakes uh, so i always recom I recommend you uh, to pre-process your data properly and to pre-process your data uh, the best you can <laughs> and to spend a lot of the uh, of your part of pre-processing the data to prepare them for the data analytics in general when you prepare your data for for uh, a statistic data analytics you can conduct the the, uh, the other statistical analysis uh, now i will present you descriptive statistics it's extremely 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 uh, uh, simple uh, Python uh, have only one function, describe, oh, sorry, uh, that will give you all the uh, important measures that you will need for descriptive statistics. Mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and percentiles. So that's all that you uh, uh, will write in report and report related to business and things like that. Uh, so. This is very, very simple. But as I uh, know uh, uh, right here, this is only for quantitative variables. If you have qualitative variables, and, and of course you will have, for example, uh, the city, uh, uh, or for example, the university name, name of the company, or name of the customers, and things like that, you will need to include uh, this argument, include all in function, within function. Uh, if you want to have all the data listed. So as you can see, you, you have the more frequent values, first last value, which is minimum and maximum in qualitative data, uh, the number of unique values that you have. So practically you have description, and that's why we call it descriptive statistic, description of your data. Descriptive statistic cannot answer your questions. But descriptive statistics uh, will lead you and guide you uh, through the inferential statistics. So practically, you can describe the data set you have. 
you can notice uh, what can be done. Uh, I, I know that I told you that pre-processing is a, is a part of data analytics where you need to spend the most of the time uh, and to, to, to actually conclude what you want to investigate, but also descriptive statistics can be very helpful for you if you still don't know how to organize your data, your thoughts, uh, how to define your hypothesis, descriptive statistics could help you a lot. And uh, this is practically the way you can, you have one function and one additional argument, ar argument and you will have everything. Practically, you can answer all the, uh, the, the questions you need. Descriptive statistics are, is, practically mostly related with, uh, with visuals, and you will have a lot of graphs um, if, you, if you conduct descriptive statistics. So this is uh, one type of graph histogram, uh, widely used uh, in practically every analysis I saw in my entire career, in every report. So histogram uh, answer you uh, uh, more than one question. For example, the most important question that can answer is how your data data is distributed uh, or how your data uh, on more variables are distributed. Also, you have more complex uh, histogram where you have three uh, dimension, uh, uh, dimensions. You have sales, order data, and segments. So you can follow the trend and the distribution uh, for each of the segments uh, 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 in time. I can say it like that, yes, in time. So it's also very useful, and you can see uh, a lot of similar histograms in in, uh, in lot of uh, reports, data analytics, BI reports, and things like that. Pie chart, I don't recommend that. I <laughs> I know that probably I'm the only one analyzer who hate pie chart, but I need to 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 give you also the example of this uh, pie chart, you can see it's very easy to, to create and it's very often used. Now you can present it with percentage, with, uh, uh, with percentages or with absolute values, it's upon you. Uh, but uh, it's, in my opinion, uh, it's more readable uh, and have more meaning if you present something like this than like this. But of course you can, use whatever you want and what is good uh, fit for your uh, report. Once when you finish the descriptive statistics, uh, unfortunately, most of the what TT test is doing, actually, uh, it uh, gives you uh, uh, a way to compare the two groups uh, uh, in some specific measure. So this is a good if you have two group, a variable with two group, and you have some specific measure, measure you will want to test the differences within a groups, t-test is a good, um, good test for you. So what you need to know when you read the, the, the test is that actually you need to read t-statistic is the, is the value of the test. Uh, you can read degrees of freedom, t-level to see if your test is statistically significant and one, what it's mean that, what it means to actually that uh, when some, something is statistically significant, it means that you have differences uh, uh, within a groups. And that's very important information for you. If you your hypothesis is to test, do you have a differences? This will give you actually an answer to this question in every uh, 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 test that you, you will uh, conduct in parametric, uh, parametric and non-parametric test in inferential statistics. Also, you have a t-test for dependent samples. What it means? It means when you actually have uh, some pre-test and post-test, I can say like that, or for example, uh, better, better example, if you have a, a same group of people and you would like to test them in January or in February, this is a good test for you. So you will use the same uh, uh, group of people and you will test the differences, for example, in their math knowledge in January and in February and to I try to compare it and to see do you have some statistical significance? Uh, did they improve or they're worse? So you can see it with this test. 
uh, the logic is very, very similar. So you have very, very easily uh, function. Practically, you just need to uh, spe specify uh, the months you would like to test. You have all the months in the data set I will give you uh, to you, so no worries. Maybe this is a little bit fictional for you, but when you see the data set and you see the entire code, it will be totally uh, uh, clear for you what it is. And you can see here that you actually have a, the value of statistic test and you have also the p-value. So if the p-value is lower than uh, 0 0.05, we can say that something is statistically significant. Is the p, if the p-value is higher like this one, we cannot uh, say that we have differences. So practically the knowledge, they, they, their knowledge of math is identical in January and February. So they didn't, didn't improve themselves or they're not worse. Uh, so statistically significant. Th that's what the test can uh, can give you an information about. Also, you have ANOVAS. ANOVAS is uh, uh, more, more complicated uh, uh, com in comparison with t-test because you can compare more than two groups. Uh, if you, uh, the logic is very similar and you can compare the three groups uh, one with each other and you compare them in total. So it's a little bit maybe fictional, but it will be clear to you. Uh, here uh, you practically create the model, you specify the feature variable that have three levels. You can see expert, junior and student, and you pick the measure uh, which you would like to see the differences on. For example, um, how often uh, the number of the courses they watch on data camp, for example. And you want uh, to see, uh, did experts, for example, look more courses or juniors are more active or students are actually the one who follow, follow the workshop, the uh, uh, courses and things like that. So you can do that by comparing uh, it with the ANOVA. And as you can see, you have F test, which is the, 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 the statistic of the, uh, the, the test you measure, and you have p-value. You can see again that p-value is higher. So again, we don't have any statistical significance, which means that actually we cannot say that students or juniors or experts uh, are more related with them. Uh, are actually more involved uh, uh, in watching courses or uh, they, or boot camps and things like that online. So uh, you can compare that uh, looking the means. Here you get here you can just see is this statistically significant, and you can see the F test, uh, the, the value, the test you you, you calculate. Uh, following the logic as in t-test, you have also no for dependent samples and the logic is identical. So if you have the identical people who uh, uh, who actually uh, cross more than uh, one uh, situation, for example, you want to measure them in January, February, March and April, uh, they're not knowledge, uh, their knowledge in math, for example, you can do that with ANOVA. With t-test, you can only compare two groups. With ANOVA, uh, you can compare more than two groups. So you can compare three, four, five, how many you need and you want. It depends on the hypothesis you actually set. And you have, uh, again, the p-value you, look, you look, look at and also the f-value, the value of the test. Uh, DF is also important. You have the explanation in my code uh, because uh, we will need much more time uh, to explain each statistic in details, but it's very important. So I give, so I leave the explanation in the code, code per se and in additional material in, in uh, the folder. Well, that's cool. When uh, ANOVA and T-test can be used when you have a normal distribution. Uh, but in reality, we never have a normal distribution and we always have some uh, strangely <laughs> distributed data. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of outliers, we have a lot of binomial distributions and things like that. And for each of them, we need some non-parametric non equivalents. So men with new is comparable with a t-test for independent samples. If you have a normal 
perfect distribution in two groups and one variable you want to see the, the differences on, you use t-test for independent samples. But if your distribution is not normal, so if, if it's binomial or you have a lot of outliers, zeros, and things like that, you use man with new. The logic is very similar, so you need to create a group. You, you remember that from the t-test. And after that, to compare the groups, see, you will give you, you will receive statistics. It's, it's the value of the test, and you will receive the p-value. Again, you can see that p-value is not statistically significant, and you can conclude that you don't have actually any gender differences in, in the uh, uh, people who actually view your courses, for example. Identical logic, kraskal wallis test, uh, which is comparable with ANOVA for independent samples. So again, if you have three, four groups and you have a distribution which is not normal, you can use kraskal wallis test. If distribution is norm normal Gaussian distribution, you use ANOVA. And again, the logic is identical. You create, you define, the groups are already created. You, you define three groups you will like to compare. The variable you will look at and compare it uh, within, uh, uh, compare on, and uh, you can calculate statistic and p value. You can see that here we don't compare, uh, calculate means, we calculate medians. That's because of the normality of the distribution. If you have a normal distribution, in statistics, you can use means, standard deviation, and you can interpret your results uh, with those measures. But if your distribution is not normal, and it's almost always the case in industry, me, uh, median is the right measure for you, me measure of central, central tendency. And uh, this is the measure you can use in the comparison of the free groups. So uh, this is... A, um, a little bit more related with uh, with uh, mathematics and with probabilities, but probabilities is, uh, are extremely important. Probability uh, is extremely important to understand if you want to do data analysis. Uh, I didn't uh, write anything about that in this course, but probably those who are interested in that field knows already knows that. And uh, you can uh, read a little bit about uh, normality of the distribution, uh, just just to have a whole picture how we actually pick those tests and how they are created. Very similar uh, example. Uh, if you uh, you can use the Wilcoxon sign rank test, uh, which is comparable with the test for dependent samples. If you have more than one uh, uh, group and you measure, for example, more than one month. January, February, March, April, and you don't have uh, a normal distribution of the data, so you can use this test uh, and not uh, the, the t-test for dependent samples. So you can see, uh, oh, sorry, not more than two groups, two groups. So you can pick two months, November and December, and you can use the one measure, for example, uh, how many money people spend. And uh, you can see if they spend more money in November or in December, and if this is statistically significant. And you can see that it is. They spend more money on November. We don't know why. Maybe we have more holidays in November, uh, birthdays or, th or things like that. And it's statistically significant. So we can conclude, actually, that uh, there is a difference uh, uh, between those two groups. Identical thing, thing with the uh, ANOVA for dependent measure and for dependent samples, the Friedman test. Uh, so if you have more than two groups, you can see October, November, and December. And again, you want to check, for example, uh, when people spend the most money, uh, you can calculate this test. It's very, very simple. You see that. Uh, and you can see the p values. Okay. It's again statistically significant, significant, but but significant, but uh, differences are very small. So we can say, of course, again, of course, again, we spend the, the most money in November, 
we still don't know why, but we uh, spend the least money in October, for example. And that could be a good question for you. Maybe you investigate something like that. Maybe in your business, you need information some, uh, similar to this one. So just think, uh, uh, if, if, for example, in your everyday life, did you research something similar in business? Do you use some simi similar logic and try to investigate similar things? And it, it will be, I think, more clear to you uh, for what you can use those tests. At the end, we have only uh, two slides and we are very close to the end. Correlation, we have more than one uh, type of the correlation. I focus my attention to Pearson and Spearman. Uh, those uh, correlation coefficients are uh, mostly interpreted in, in the beginning, beginner uh, course for data analytics. And what correlation uh, will tell you? It will tell you uh, uh, if your measures are related, just that. You cannot see, uh, did one predict another? Well, uh, for example, uh, I try to explain myself better. Um, did uh, if you have the higher values on one uh, variable, is that mean that you will have a higher values on other variables? You cannot uh, investigate uh, that with a correlation. With a correlation, you just know are your measures are related. But the type of the relation you will need to know in regression, and we will back to that. So here I pick the two measures again, fictional measures, and try, and try to calculate are, they, are they, those measures are related. And I see that actually they are. And if I think, okay, how many time you open the link for the course and how many hours you spend of the course. So in my logic, if I click more than once uh, uh, to link, uh, to open the link on my course, of course, I spend more, more hours on that course. So uh, logically, it, it, they are related, and actually, this coefficient support my idea that those measures are related. But you can see here that we have a lot of outliers, or we have some extreme values. We don't know. We will need an additional analysis for that to discover that. Also, we have Spearman correlation statistics. Spearman correlation is mostly used. I use it here for the identical variables, and it can be used for that. But you will read in the literature, and I support that, that uh, Spearman correlation uh, can be and should be used when you have a, a variable with a range level of uh, range, uh, range time, range, range time, range type, type of variable. So if you have some, uh, for example, uh, some groups and you want to investigate the correlation between measure in that group, Spearman correlation would be better option for you. At the end, we have a linear regression. This is very, very, very basic explanation of linear regression. The regression is very advanced. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you investigate regression in detail, it's very, invest, uh, uh, very advanced analysis. And that's why we use it in machine learning and not, not uh, in data analytics projects per se. So this is uh, the, the uh, model for the regression analysis. Uh, regression is modeling and uh, you need to specify epsilon and uh, X values and you, you need to specify uh, more than uh, just two things and to specific what you would like to predict what is regressor and things like that. I will not go in detail with that. Again, you have something more detailed explained in the code, but uh, in general, I think that if you want to investigate the regression in details, a little bit advanced course uh, would be more appropriate. Uh, but what regression can answer you to? It can answer actually if you use two measures. Are those measures related? Okay. You can answer that question uh, with a correlation, but uh, the trend of the relation, you see this scatter plot regression line, this is scatter plot, and this is regression line. So you can see how values are grouped around the regression line. If they're close to regression line, it means that actually your first and your second measure are very related. And you can conclude that if one measure grows, the other one grows too, or opposite. You will see that 
following this regression line. And of course, you need to check the regression coefficient just to be sure if your regression is uh, high and uh, high enough that we can uh, talk about the, 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 the predictions. If you can predict values on one variable, following the values on the other variable. Thank you. This was very fast <laughs> course in, in basic data analytics. Uh, you, you need uh, much more knowledge and courses to, to, to be more advanced in this, but I hope that this course will be, uh, uh, will, will be good for your start and helpful. And uh, this is the link I think that Amy uh, will send you on chat. Uh, you, you can download all the material I used for my students here. As I told you, you can uh, text me on LinkedIn if you need anything, more advanced courses, recommendations for the literature, more data sets to play. I'm always willing to share to help everything I can. So thank you so much for your attention. Well, thank you so much, uh, Isidora, for walking us through this. It's very important that we have uh, the basics of statistics and data analytics up in the game before we start going for, you know, reaching for higher stars. And thank you so much for walking us through the fundamentals so neatly. So there are a couple of questions that we have. I'm going to go over some of them. Um, so the first one that we have was uh, something that I found very interesting uh, was from uh, Veronica. And she asked that, do you have any tips or advice for creating a well-formed research question? Oof, uh, great question, <laughs> to be honest. Well, uh, the tips will be always, uh, you have a big problem. You always have a big, big, big picture, big problem. So you try to, to make uh, practically portions of that problem and to, to uh, specify specific parts. For example, if you want to investigate how uh, Corona, I don't know, improve uh, online courses, that's very uh, general question, but you need to go in depth and to specify the details. So uh, more details you have, it will be easier for you to focus your attention on something specific. That will be my advice. All right. Uh, the next question that I found very interesting was, uh, can you explain the importance of variable selection during pre-processing, like understanding which variables to focus your pre-processing on? Yes. Uh, when you are totally beginner, I always recommend to focus on the variables where you have data. So if you have a variable with a lot of more than uh, uh, than half uh, missing data, or you have strange data values, you have a lot of outliers, very specific values, uh, you need more knowledge to uh, pre-process data sets and variables like that. So if you are a beginner, I will always suggest you to pick the variables with more data, more clear data, it will be easier for you. Uh, but when you become advanced, I am always recommend you to pick uh, uh, problematic variables because uh, those are challenging variables and you will learn data anal analytics only by analyzing those variables. Thank you so much, Isidora. I'll take one last question. And for the rest of it, uh, Isidora will be available online for a couple of minutes to answer them in chat. Uh, but one thing um, that I found interesting that maybe we can discuss right now is, is there a preferred test to verify normality of a distribution? Because a lot of the tests that we were going through takes the normal assumption, right? So, yes. yeah. Yeah, thank you for this question. Yes, we actually have statistical tests to test, to test normality. Uh, Wilk Shapiro and Kolmogorov Smirnov. Two tests. I will write the name in the chat uh, for all who are interested. And you can check that. So in the pre-processing part, you can pick one variable and you can conduct those two tests. And you will see if they are statistically significant, your distribution is not normal. If they are not, uh, statistically significant, probably your distribution is close to normal. So I will uh, write the two names of those, uh, those statistical tests, and I highly recommend it to use it to use those tests for each numeric variable in pre-processing part. 
All right. Thank you so much, Isidora. Uh, and uh, you can continue answering the remainder of the questions yes. in chat. Uh, that would be great. And thank you so much again for the fantastic workshop. Thank you.